Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to the KCM. It's time for week seven. We're starting out here with JYJ versus Hero. Let's get it started with game number one. Quite the lineup here this week. We've got Light Royal JYJ, Snow Bisu Best, Hero, Queen, Action. Still missing from this lineup though is Sulky, that current ASL champion. Haven't seen him out to play recently. And this, again, Protoss lineup looking insanely stacked. Yeah, it's looking kind of a little bit scary actually. Looking at the Terran players that have been chosen as well, I'm not too happy about it because all three of these players have a sub 50% win rate in, in their respective TVP matchup and going up against a lineup like this can be really deadly for them. So, and Hero Queen in action, unless they get taken out by the Protoss lineup by some happenstance and, you know, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried for Team Terran here. I feel like, you know, Royal and Light and JWJ, they're all really good in TVZ. Light especially, he's got a super high win rate in TVZ, but they're going to have to deal with the, the Protoss players eventually. And unless the Zerg can take out the Protoss, I feel like Terran's just rolling the dice at this rate. I want to see Sharp come back into this lineup. I want to see some Sock here, but maybe they're saving... Uh, that special lineup for the semifinals and the finals. Who knows? There's not much. There's there's really no chance of them coming back at this point and uh, taking overtaking the Protoss points from here. So maybe just looking towards some practice and look at this hero actually getting an early pool, expecting some cheese out of JYJ maybe. Yeah, it's also possible that he wants to counter um, a, a sporting CT situation, but this pool's not really going to accomplish much besides making him super safe in the early game because we've got this like Mickey Mouse wall in the bottom right, which is the best position on Polypoid for Terran. So JYJ's really lucked out with that. will allow him to min-max his build a little bit more than usual and make less Marines than he needs to if he wants to choose that. Yeah, he won't have to make many Marines at all, and we're probably going to just blindly make quite a few lings here. We're not sending out a drone or anything. Uh, we're going to see this SCV coming in soon. It's a cross-map scout here for JYJ. Everything is actually lining up perfectly for him so far. Yeah, and with this cross-map scout, I mean, seeing this super early um, uh, pool timing by noticing the, the timing of the hatchery being so delayed, it's going to really make JYJ feel comfortable. He's going to not only optimize because of his wall in, but now he's going to be optimized against specifically what a uh, hero is doing. So CC goes down right away, then you have to make the marine early on because of the cross-map positioning. The links just can't get there to punish, and the wall in will be completed in time. So JYJ super safe, going to be super greedy with that 15 CC timing, and going to be happy going forward. Yeah, making just, you know, one, two Marines here is completely fine. And look at this. Hero doesn't even know where his opponent is. So he's going to send Lings to the top right. They're not going to make it there for quite some time. Yeah, JYJ here looking very, very good in game number one. Are we actually going to start the, the week with a Terran victory? That That's going to be a change of pace here. Uh, it certainly would give some more morale and confidence to the Terran and if they do want to think of this more as like a practice for the semi-finals, a TVZ showdown, and this is a great way to start, right? So I think this is a good good thing for the Terran going forward if they just focus purely on that um, semi-finals right now. Well, it's not over here yet. Of course, it is Hero. He is uh, fantastic at transitioning into a late game. Very, very strong macro player. We'll see uh, how he can bring this back, but there's no... You know, no two ways about it. He is behind right now. He is in a pretty bad spot now. He will try to catch this SCV and remove some of the information here on the map for JYJ. If JYJ knows everything from uh, the transition here for Hero, then he, he's not going to be able to find a way back in. JYJ is not going to allow it. So he needs to cut off that information and leave a little bit of an unknown here on the map for uh, JYJ so that he can kind of steal back that advantage some way, somehow. Mm, meanwhile, we have Hero going for this like 2.5 hatch adjusted timing due to the early pool. Has a little bit of gas banked up as well, so he is trying to optimize his own production and squeeze out a few extra lava to enable him to catch up in that economic curve of the game with this uh, early advantage from JYJ. Might catch this SCV, actually 5 HP, just on that, going to be snagged by that um, claws of that uh, Zergling. And now the Spire going up uh, pretty normal timing uh, relative to this 2.5 hatch, so yeah, I think all things considered, this the game looks very playable for Hero, but I do like um, JYJ's position right now. Uh, JYJ gonna get a scanner here. Just one, though. 
slowing down his economy by a couple of SUVs, but he does need to know what's coming here, whether it's going to be a lurker play or a spire. It's always a, a danger uh, as a Terran player. If there is a lurker play with that wall in, you could end up losing quite a bit. And there's not a lot of space to build bunkers there either. And he's going to follow up with a four racks right before the scan. He scans the natural. Interestingly, he doesn't see any tech here and he doesn't have another scanner. So he's just going to send out his small marine medic force and hope to force some sunkins. But I don't think that's going to happen here. Do you, Shun? Uh, with the cross map positions, I, I highly doubt it. It's very easy for the Mutalisks to pop and defend in time. He'd much rather spend those lava on Mutas and not Lings, for example. He'd much rather not have to sacrifice any of his economy because he needs to stay optimized to be able to pump out all of his gas into Mutas. Right now, as we see, his minerals and gas are very perfectly succinct to basically be able to make as many Mutas as possible at this phase of the game and then go into making some Overlords. So, yeah, he's not going to do anything like that. He's just going to go pure Muta pump right now. But with the 4 racks play, it does give a lot more map control potential to tear and they can threaten counterattacks but the cross map spawns do really heavily favor uh, the, the zerg in the sense that the terran takes a long time to come out on the map but it also means it's harder for the muta to keep track of this bio ball later on when it gets a little bit more bigger yeah you also have to consider the uh, lateness of this third base and third gas i mean we're going to be able to pump out mutas here but we don't have that third gas online it's going to be a little while before that can come up and the hero here, he's just going to have to work with what he's got. He's not going to be able to transition here off of two bases and try to end the game. He will have to get that third base up eventually. He's going to have to buy a lot of time here for himself. He's coming in, trying to pick off a turret here, trying to open up a position from which to harass this SCV line. But JYJ is having none of it. He's actually moving out across the map right now. His plus one's done. Back at home, hero building a lot of sunken colony though. I think he's just going to dive in here and he will dive on top of these Marines. Picking off quite a few of them. Only two Sunkins here. He actually needs more than this if he wants to just uh, commit to uh, a kill here on a bunch of SCVs. And he will start to uh, be produce more Sunken Colonies. But a Stim and running up here. JYJ just going to go for the throat right now. Bunch of Mutas are coming. Okay, he turns around. He's going to stack up and try to find these Mutas crossing the field. He doesn't manage to catch them. But he did force them out of his main base. Then Hero has to return home. Yeah, it's a nice little high-level maneuver there from JYJ to kind of threaten the bus, but really just be trying to snag those muters on the retreat and not quite able to find them on that vector, but uh, no matter. Usually the vision range is so short. I mean, he's going to get some muters here, though. Does manage to pick one of those off. There's another one dangerously low. He needs to be very careful. JYJ is extremely good at his bio control. He's good at being very fluid and keeping them uh, moving from a square formation to a line formation to engage. And uh, a lot of the DPS uh, can be dished out from those gorse rifles. So, yeah, just one stim and attack move is enough to start gunning down an entire stack of muters in seconds. And right now we see uh, Hero being a little bit sloppy with his muters, take, losing another one there. Only down to just seven, but all he's got to do is just buy as much time as possible will not die right now maybe he'll be fine but like you say earlier you've got this third gas online does hero so I'm not sure how he's going to transition into the mid to late game phase without getting maybe a, a muta link stab on these bios soon yeah and the, the middle link stab is is looking less and less likely uh to to kind of overwhelm jyj here the longer this time goes on right because the marine medic ball is going to grow and grow and grow and we're also going to be getting into our uh, next level of tech here but he's got four sunken colonies back at home what is the plan is he just going to dive i think we're just going to see hero try to overtake the main base here try to overtake the uh the production while holding back at home with just pure sunken here he comes that's a lot of marines though inside the main they're targeting down some of these mutas because there's two different uh groups of mutas being controlled right now and i don't think he can take this over i think that uh, the plan here for hero was definitely to take over the main base, just shut down all the marine production, and then just hold back at home. But he's going to have to abandon that plan as he's transitioning here to hive on just two bases. I said he couldn't do it, but he's going to try it here. I just, I don't think that JYJ will be beaten by this strategy. No, it's it's far too middle ground. There's no real advantage here for Hero to leverage anymore. And there was such a great, great reaction from JYJ to uh, read the game state like that and understand that he just needs to keep his bio and his main uh, back at home and not risk sending out any more reinforcements, keep the bio ball containing the Zerg and being a threat out on the map while also making sure there was no potential of counter damage. So now JYJ is in a phenomenal position 
and can just put a lot of pressure onto Hero, slow down this Defiler timing a little bit, frustrate him by having to pulse out a few more muters earlier on. And now we've got a huge, massive bio ball, and the Zerg is just going to struggle to get a third gas online. Yeah, he's getting a third gas online so late here, and it feels really, really bad. More reinforcements coming up. This is actually now enough to bust through all four sunken colonies, and JYJ going to not waste any time here diving directly on top of those. Was this a little bit too premature because the mutas were buying that time for the uh, sunkens to deal their damage? He's going to pick off the medics here if he can, and the lurker does burrow. So the lurker going to be targeted. Beautiful target fire there by JYJ. Jumping on top of that second lurker going to burrow here. More lurker eggs coming down as well, and lings are just barely going to spawn in time to hold. But that was super, super close here. Lurkers here on the ramp. Looks like this one's been pushed back by a single Marine. And another force of Marine going to head out on the map. Still, this bio force out in front of the natural is partially alive here. We've got some medics, some Marines still there. But, geez, that was a really close hold by Hero. Can he actually bring this back and get this third gas online? It seems unlikely, but he's going to give it a shot. Yeah, the best thing about the hold for Hero was the fact that after the Lurker Spine hit just before dying, he, he held position on his uh, muters on all the Marines that just like ate that subterranean spine volley. And all the Marines are super low HP from the stims. They're basically like 10 HP. And he just like volleyed them all down with one big uh, hold position and just obliterated that uh, infantry force. That's a really great hold from Hero. A really, really tight hold there, but this is not over. JYJ now has his vessels here we're gonna have to see some fantastic lurker spines here we're gonna have to see some good you know stacking here because the irradiates are really gonna hurt the number of lurkers uh, on this high ground he's got three in that stack jyj might underestimate that and try to run up this ramp but more lurkers are coming here these are all the lurkers from the natural by the way so we don't really have anything over that natural but we don't have anything over there for jyj either so really Hero going to have to min-max here, bring his army to the position where it's needed most. And, uh, you know, kind of mirror the, the movements here of JYJ. Make sure he has exactly enough in each position to stay alive. And if he makes one mistake, JYJ will just bust right through and kill everything. This is a very dangerous situation for Hero. Yeah, he's going to rotate around all the way to this natural expansion area. There's not actually currently that many lurkers or a defiler there to really hold. There's only just a singular sunken, so JYJ might have a little timing window here to start pushing in. He's going to run in anyway. There's a few lurkers underneath that um, overlord, but they're going to get target down very quickly by JYJ on attack move. Does take the sunken as well. There's a few lurkers definitely trying to come out of this Nidus, which will be able to hold on to position. Some lanes coming in from the, the, the rear as well to help clean this up, but the lurkers are spread apart right now, so a bit of micro, JYJ can still make this fight work. The lurkers desperately trying to borrow. Ready to go on as well. Finally, a defiler is out, desperately trying to, co to consume this drone to pop out a dark swarm. Does get the dark swarm, but the brother remaining lurker is irradiated, so that can die. Beautiful block from the lurk of the ling and drone there, preventing those marines to get up into the middle line. And now JYJ trying to do a little counterattack, picking off this lurker in the top right quadrant on the map to come in here and start pressuring this drone line. The ling's pouring out of the Nidus canal to try and clean this up. There's no medical fire back here, so these marines will be dealt with quite quickly, isn't it? Wow, just again. Barely hanging on here, Hero, holding on by his fingertips here, his fingernails breaking off as he just clutches onto this game. He's so close to being out of this one. You can see he was just barely broken there. If there was a medic or two in that army that just ran up this ramp, he would have been able to take this fight. But there's the Defiler falling. One egg on the ramp is all that pre prevents Hero from dying in this game right now. Look at this. He's just going to stim and target that egg while sending some more units over here. Oh, just Hydras popping out is all he has right now. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Just having Hydras here. He doesn't have Lurker. He's going to have to try and make another egg on the ramp. I don't know if that blocks. I don't think it does. One Lurker no. getting irradiated immediately here. And the, the uh, Marines should be able to run up this ramp now. Ling's going to run down, trying to buy a little bit more time here for another Lurker to pop out. Another Lurker pops out. It gets irradiated immediately as well. This egg is about to finish. He does target down that one Lurker on the high ground. This is a desperate hold here from Hero, but it's just about out of time. Running into the natural here. One Defiler pops out. He's just barely, barely going to hold, I think, in the top right. But 
No fire bats now coming here with fire bats making their way to the front. You cannot defend with li just pure Ling and Dark Swarm. You have to have Lurker there as well. And now he's broken through everywhere. Really valiant defense here from Hero, though. Really showing his quality, his level of skill here, even from behind. But JYJ absolutely relentless. Takes him down here in game number one. GG. G. Jumping on here into game number two. It's going to be JYJ versus Best. But before we get started here, guys, I want to just make a quick announcement. Uh, letting you guys know that we have been remonetized. Or some sort of mistake this week uh, from YouTube uh, automation uh, that uh, flagged my videos or flagged my channel for reuse. I think it's because of the KCM, actually. Uh, that... Uh, they were thinking that I was just simply up re or re-uploading um, the that channel's videos in order to get views, but that's not the case. We are uh, adding to this uh, content, and we have permission from KSEM. So uh, we did a little video uh, essay, a little three-minute uh, video appeal, and it was immediately uh, responded to by the YouTube um employees so uh, we are remonetized here guys thank you for everyone who contacted me in support after seeing the message i am gonna take down that uh that post about being demonetized now that that's been resolved but uh it's it's nice that it was resolved so quickly just one day one sleepless night for me here thinking that something had gone wrong but uh, luckily that's all been resolved so glad Glad to glad to have that announcement. Yeah, I'm sure I can speak for most people in the little nice community we have here at the English KCM commentary side of things that we're we're both grateful for that to be resolved and can get back straight back into the action. I was a little bit disappointed I couldn't cast last night and uh, I'm sure you guys were disappointed not being able to watch as well. So yeah, luckily we're just straight back into the action without too much of a hiccup and I'm sure we can all be th thankful for that, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. We are back here and uh gonna be enjoying this epic game from best cannot wait to see how he smashes through jyj here on apocalypse or whether jyj will you know surprise us all and and be able to take down best here i think that would be a, a welcome surprise to everybody but really best mm -hmm. has just been showing some amazing pvt all season i'm sure he's at the absolute top of his game here uh, going into the ASL season. Looks like he almost loses that probe. Pretty good micro, honestly. Control here early with the SCV. That's not easy to do to get the moving shot there with the SCV. Oh, it's absolutely hard. You've really got to bump belly to the SCV. The, the fusion cutter is a very low range, unlike the particle beam of the probe and what have you. So, yeah, really nice to see that he's confident enough in his control in early game that he's already showing some signs of a... Uh, you know the, the momentum that he needs to like really push through the likes of best he's, he's maybe not bringing out the tranquilizer gun for this gorilla and you realize that he's go straight to the elephant gun here and not mess around you know what i'm saying <laughs> he's gonna bring out the big guns here with that marine reaching the field oh he's almost getting the kill on this sev he will eventually track that down getting the moving shot there one kill on that probe the uh shields there making the big difference and we're not going to have a scout from JYJ for quite some time. He is going to slide a vulture out on the map, but that's going to be met by the dragoon. And we'll have to, I, I think, run back home. This is maybe a bad choice here for JYJ. He's going to move around the right-hand side, try to make space, and, uh, you know, slide in somewhere else. But this second dragoon might just finish this off. This is, uh, this is a bad start here. Really bad start for JYJ. Oh, he doesn't get the second shot. What happened? Wow. Yeah, I think the goo just bugged a little bit. He might get the pro moving shot, though. Beautiful execution from Best, just grabbing that vulture in his gorilla paw and crushing it instantly. King Kong is in full form right now, and these Marines, a little bit out of position, going to take a few base disruptor shots from this Dragoon, lowering their HP. Need to maybe with tactically withdraw to that bunker and maintain their position. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate there for JYJ. Not only did he uh, lose that vulture like that, but he didn't get the fourth uh, fragmentation shot on the Goon to shave his uh, shields all the way down to zero. So the Marines didn't even put the, the Dragoon too deep into hull uh, hit points either. So now this Dragoon's much fresher, fresher than it would be normally. And now this tank can't really come out and pressure the Goons in the same way it could usually. Mm, oh, he does, does get a good shot there on the low HP mm. Dragoon. So bringing that down a little bit further. But 
You don't want to give best any inches here. You don't want to give best uh, any advantages in the early game. And JYJ has already thrown away his first vulture. Sometimes we talk about, you know, is it worth it? Is it not to throw a vulture into the main base of the Protoss player? Try to get a few probes. It's definitely not worth it here uh, yeah. with no mines on the map and the vulture dead and no probes killed. This is this is a bad situation for the Terran player. It's not an unplayable situation, but similar to what we just saw with Hero versus uh, JYJ in that last game, it's like one player has managed to dig themselves a bit of a hole with their build and the way they've ex executed so far. Yeah, we talk about it a lot, um, Terran players behind closed doors, about, you know, is it worth, like, this Vulture killing, like, two, maybe three SCVs? But the reality is, I think most high-level Terran players would admit to you that even if it kills two probes, they don't really consider it that worth it, because it's much more valuable to have these mines out on the map a little bit later on for map control and other presence. So now they're building up this three-tank push up this ramp, going to put a lot of pressure on the best, going to have to rotate out to the east, out of uh, harm's way from this push timing. Very strong uh, push timing from Terran, they can do at this stage of the game. The three-tank push is very, very potent. But we have a Reaver on the way for best, so we'll be able to slow this down and punish this if uh, JYJ chooses to fully commit. Yeah, this is the problem here. You had to push up the first high ground. Now you've got a second high ground to deal with here on Apocalypse. He's going to look for a place where he can get up this ramp without uh, being challenged too much. And actually best, letting him uh, go up the ramp here pretty easily. I thought he would dive upon that with four Dragoons. You can get a two shot on a tank, but he doesn't want to let those all die. So he is going to wait for the Reaver to come out here. And here it comes. Reaver going to make its way to the front here. Some mines are going to be thrown down. Uh, the uh, Zealots are just going to pull that into a tank. Tank gets picked off here. That's a huge kill. And now we're going to have this Reaver dropping Scarabs. Oh, but he doesn't pick up the Reaver. Oh, but the the, the mine died there. He didn't. Mine died. The mine died just in time. I thought that mine was definitely going to connect. This tank is going to die. Everything going wow. so wrong here for JYJ. Really, even in the the situation where it looked like that Reaver should have been taking huge damage, just nothing happened. Are you kidding me? This is so bad for JYJ right now. And the follow-up Vulture run by not even going to work either. I think he bought his tranquilizer gun by accident anyway, and he's shooting some darts into Best, and it's just making him more angry. And, and now we got this little shuttle in the main base, gonna be putting on some pressure. The turret's not ready in time, so it can come in here. Although it might get trapped now that the other turret's gonna be finished. Needs to be careful, gonna lose this shuttle, but does get the reaver out on the main base. Does kill two of those SCVs already, gonna target some more down in a moment. Does not get a good connection on those SCVs with the run, though, so does only kill like three or so SCVs for his trouble. But a little bit of lost mining time as well to boot. And now this bunker at the natural expansion gonna be pressured as well, maybe force a bit of a repair from um jyj stretching his economy thinner yeah still and now this bucket might go down there's only one tank here and a mine to defend so right now there's a little bus timing here for best he can come in and start picking up scvs at the very least putting a lot of pressure onto jyj now even more lost mining time and scvs dying and no matter what happens now this is pretty bad for jyj this is this is a bop this is a bop right here he does pull in the mine but i mean best he he does the exact the the perfect thing there just backing away from the mine uh, only allowing it to hit one of the dragoons and and only partial damage there because he was moving away from it the time that it exploded so just doing everything perfectly here he is ripping jyj apart in this game right now does lose one dragoon but i mean the amount of tanks that have fallen so far for jyj is it four now he's gonna try and run up here looks like that's a little bit too uh <laughs> too ambitious from best but already his position is just about unlosable here he's gonna jump on this last tank it will get one shot off but he picks off a fifth tank already this is insanity absolute insanity that best is able to do this to jyj right now Meanwhile, has his third base operational mining with probes and doing all this damage on top of that, resetting the tank count that many times and also killing SCVs and delaying mining time. Like every metric is going in best way right now with the forge upgrade going at the third base as well. Going to be keeping up with the Terran in terms of the late game potency with the army trades as well. So pretty much everything going best way. Going to be throwing down a lot of gateways now. Probably going to go all the way up to eight or so gateways at the bare minimum, maybe all the way up to 10 soon. And he's just going to make so many units uh, to just ape through here and just crush this jyj poor helpless terran in the near future yeah can you imagine jyj trying to take a third base here with these like Almost eight impossible. gateways coming up it's gonna be so hard for him to move forward even the few inches that you need to move 
to be able to secure the third base here. You barely need to move out at all. But I don't think it's going to be... Uh, I think it's going to be too far. It's going to be too far for JYJ. He's not going to be able to get out there. But he's sneaking by with one single vulture. He's going to get about four kills here. That's uh, that's some pretty decent damage. Eventually, the probes are going to track this down, it looks like. Oh, he does finish it off. Which is... I mean, this is some good damage, but this is way less than what he needs right now. He needs so much more right. to be able to come back in this game. Dropping the Reaver off here in the main. Going to pick off this missile turret and open up the position so he can deal some more damage here. Going after the Goliath right now. Can he get one shot on that? Okay, he will get that one shot onto the tank, actually. Not picking off the Goliath, which is a bit uh, questionable here. But now he's going to back off and just leave that shuttle as kind of a threat in the back of the mind here of JYJ while he really powers up here, gets into his zealot legs and his fourth base. Je yeah, we're gonna try and take a third here, but this is gonna be nearly impossible. We're gonna have to see like a massive uh, supply depot wall or something here from JYJ to hold on to this third. Yeah, but really he needs to find some kind of compensation for his early um, game damage he sustained. And I don't think he's going to find it. I mean, the little vulture trick to go behind the minerals, it had some value there, but not really the kind needed um, to, to keep this uh, gorilla in check. And I guess he, he needs like some chrome steel chains to tie down best right now, because he's going to explode out onto the map. These nine gateways, they're going to start churning out units. And with the fourth base online, there's no way he's going to have the production needed to not only take this third base, but maintain the, the defense in this pocket. And he might need to do something like you were saying about like the great uh, wall of supply depots or something to prevent too much of a threat from uh, best and just getting good trades with this huge infantry is going to be fielding soon and the reavers now putting some pressure encroaching on his position in the main base there is a lot, a lot of the uh, um uh, mines and such uh, scattered around the base but as long as best is paying attention you will be able to uh, navigate around those and just keeping the terran in check by knowing that there's potential the reaver coming to the main base does kind of put a lot of uh, tension on the jyj to not want to uh, move out too soon and risk uh, losing a lot more in his main yeah, he's uh, trying to stretch out here, but look at how thin the tank number is right now. He doesn't have plus two on the way. He's just starting his starport right now. He's only got that one upgrade. The army is weak here, and Best is ready to dive upon it. That's quite a few uh, Goliaths. We've got the four, which does two-shot uh, these shuttles, which is uh, going to become a factor here. Can he two-shot this? He's going to two-shot it. There we go. He gets one of them. He kills off the second shuttle very quickly here. That was some really good target fire from the uh, the Goliaths here. But is it going to really matter? How many Zealots are going to be coming forward here? Another wave coming from the north. Wow. Are you kidding me? So many units coming in here for a best. And he is just going to ape all over this man. Diving straight down the throat of the Terran. Ripping out his larynx here. Nothing that can help or can save JYJ from this point. He's just gonna gun down all of these mines. GG is called GG. JJ JYJ taps out. Wow, best absolute control, absolute domination in that game. It's actually a great sequence of attacks there from Best to time the attacks. That there's one control group of goons and one control group of zealots uh, initiating the fight with the shuttles. Then you've got this another round of zealots, almost the whole control group worth, like pouring in at the, the best possible moment for him, pun intended. And uh, yeah, just not enough vultures to soak those up as well. Really great game. Yeah, great game. Great control there by Best. Handling this Terran from start to finish. We're going to jump into game number three now. Let's go to that. Our next game going to be Queen versus Best. We're playing on this new map. And I can't remember for the life of me what it's called. What is it called, Be Radiant. Bastion? Radiant, Radiant, that's right. The new AMD map. And I think I said in one of my recent casts that this is not a, ro uh, a symmetrical map. But I, what I meant was that it's not rotationally symmetrical kind of a new theme that we've had in the new season. There's a couple of different uh, non-rotationally symmetrical maps where the naturals are actually facing each other here in the top and bottom. Well, not only that, but one thing I'd like to point out is that it's a little bit of an interesting middle ground because it's, it's a remake of Circuit Breakers, but they've taken two bases out. So it's no longer a 16 uh, base map like we're used to or a 12 base uh, map like we used to. It's a 14 base map, which creates some interesting decision making when it comes to splitting up the map horizontally or vertically. 
Because you're just splitting this map vertically, obviously you've got these two bases to contend with in the center still. So only by splitting the map horizontally can you hope to kind of keep things symmetrical in terms of the base layer. And like you say, with the, the orientation of this natural expansion, it's a little bit more of a different way of approaching the map design. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a very interesting idea that they're working with on this. And I like to see that, you know, Vermeer is the other AMD map, which was so standard. They're basically like, uh, you know, making a larger sort of polypoid or something like that, you know, just increasing the size and just making it a, a, just a massive uh, macro map. Here, they're, they're trying something a little different. They're working with some new ideas. But it is still a very standardly built map. It still feels very good to play on. It's not a scary map. It's not like a Troy or a Blitz Y or anything like that. This is a very good standard map here. And he's going to catch these links moving out on the map. The Zealot is going to head back home. This is a gateway first play from Best. He needs to get this Zealot back at home on his ramp with a probe to make sure that he doesn't take damage here or have any sort of a run by. And there's the second uh, Zealot popping out here. He immediately starts the Nexus, but he's gonna get surrounded here with this first Zealot. I think we're gonna see a run by here from Queen. Queen should be able to get by. Oh no, okay. Pretty good control there from Best to block a bunch of those Lings out. And these two Lings here on the top side, they're gonna have a hard time getting into the main. This is a big ramp. It is space tile set with this big uh, reverse ramp here. He might be able to slip by, but uh, it looks like Bess is doing a really good job handling this so far. Yeah, really exceptional control from Best in dealing with this in the most cost-efficient way without panicking too much here. Queen, though, did a very good surround on the Zealot initially. Great uh, manual move command and uh, positioning of those links, but not quite able to get the best of Best. And uh, instead, just going to be trying to get his third hatchery online as soon as possible and go into a more standard macro game from then on. Uh, is going to be starting to mine gas now. I'm curious to see if he'll be um, going for like a, a fake 973 here um, or, or what have you. But with the gateway first, and the, he didn't catch a zealot or anything thanks to the probe scale early on, actually, it kind of is a little bit hard for him to do that now. And Best was confident enough just to throw down the core in the wall. So, yeah, I feel like he's going to be calling Queen's Bluff here and say, you're not going to make any more zerglings. You don't want to, you don't want to commit to any kind of early rush here. You didn't even get to catch my zealot. Or maybe he's actually uh, saying that maybe, you know, thinking that actually you are going to do some sort of 973, right? Uh, throwing the core or the, the forge down in the main and then the core in the natural, uh, that's going to make a 973 bus that much weaker. Sometimes if you, you know, initiate a 973 and you uh, feel like you can't kill, you just get the forge and the gateway at the front, and that can sometimes be worth it, but best. Uh, putting his core up here at the front it means that you know you either have to go all in and actually kill him with that bus or otherwise he's just going to be way ahead of you with the plus one done in the main base and looks like one zealot heading around to the bottom left hand corner here he's going to try and catch that with the links but at the same time two zealots are making their way over towards the main base hopefully more links are popping out back at home yeah, it's a great job from Queen here, preventing the Zealot getting to behind this minerals for cost-efficient trades, and instead just chipping so much away, it's HP 20 HP, but meanwhile, these two Zealots making their way into the National Expansion area. Some links have been produced uh, by Queen, not quite enough to kill these efficiently though, so with good micro, a lot of these links will still die, but they can slow down this Zealot threat and prevent them from getting behind the minerals in the main and pressuring the drones and seeing the timing of this Spire too early, but yeah, going to be uh, confirming that timing just now is uh, best. He needs to get that scout off, so it's really wise that he just pulls the Zealots back into the main base to confirm that scout just uh, before they die here. Yeah, really well done by Bess. Now he has all the information that he needs. Interesting third base here on the high ground uh, at 6 o'clock here from Queen. Rather than taking the one over uh, the, the more regular third base over on the right-hand side, I guess this one's probably easier to uh, clog up with hatcheries. Am I right, Shin? Uh, yeah, I would say so, for sure. I'm curious to see how best will navigate the game going forward, though, because we didn't see any kind of like fake 973. We're just going to see a pure macro a queen go all the way up into at least five hatcheries, probably even six. It'd be because I'm kind of like, you know, very, very meta, just make a few scourge and maybe, maybe like a small handful of muters, but really the commitment is into the six hatch hydra, I imagine here. Am I wrong? Is that cannon like way too far over on the left? So that a little uh, bit, a little bit. <laughs> it, he could probably hit the gateway there on the right hand side mm -hmm. uh, with one ling. I've definitely won games on the ladder 
doo doo uh, situation like that where they just had the cannon slightly out of position and you can hit the gateway or you know one of the other buildings uh, yeah, in the wall yeah. and then the the whole thing falls apart but I don't think that's going to occur here. Best has more zealots moving out on the map. As he's killing this overlord, he's going to be pressuring, forcing more responses out of Queen and, you know, slowing down his macro as much as possible. You can see he's already almost double the supply here uh, of Queen, but that's going to ch turn around here pretty soon as Queen gets these extra hatches online and really gets into his macro. Mm, yeah, Queen doing a great job of shadowing the movement of the Zealots with his links, not allowing the Zealots to engage due to the superior speed of the links, and just keeping tabs on those Zealots at all times, making sure that the, the count of Zealots is uh, not only identified, but also there's no Zealots that have slipped out onto the map and are going to be pressuring his drones at any time. So really great job from Queen, just keeping tabs on best nonstop, making sure there's nothing that can come out from it. Even using the Scourge here, you see, to check for that Zealot move out timing, making sure he can't just sneak out some Zealots onto the map here. This is going to be a big Zealot Corsair timing here from Bess. You can see he's adding on two more gateways in the main. He's going to start spamming out more and more Zealots here. He's got the speed just about done. The plus one is just about to finish. And the plus one air attack is going to finish as well. We may be adding on some uh, Dark uh, Templar here too, just to follow up. As the Zealots are dealing the damage, the Corsairs are going to be able to kill Overlords. And while the Overlords are being killed... DTs are going to be able to slip in, deal some extra damage. Corsair is finally moving out here. We actually built some Mutas here as uh, Queen, which I'm I'm not a big fan of. I think just a pure Hydralis response would be pretty strong here, but they will be able to clean up Zealots pretty well as long as the Corsairs aren't moving out at the same time. Now, one Sunken Colony here is in a pretty good spot. Lings are going to come up and stop this. With DT slips into the main. Are you kidding me? We not paying attention wow. to this. This is like one of my games it's, on the ladder, man. Are you kidding me? And it, there's not even an overlord here to spot the red dot on the minimap, so he won't notice as well. He's got no reason to look in his main base right now. Um, for, he's, oh, he does check. He does check. He notices. He does pull the drones, but eight kills on this DT already. And now he's going to target the spire unless he made an overlord in that main hatchery. I think he made the macro ha uh, macro round from the hatchery without even looking into the main base. So maybe those aren't even overlords being produced right now. So you might just have to lose. Oh, he did. He made the hydras um, without even looking his main base and now he's got to slowly edge over with these overlords he's gonna lose the spire sam oh man this is this is giving me uh flashbacks of some of my games honestly <laughs> just wa PTSD. walking walking straight past that one single sunken colony the dg just meanders into the main and gets a huge amount of kills and oh we're catching a bunch of these corsairs corsair going down on mass Scourge making their connections. This is a great uh, pickup for Queen, but those eight drones that were lost in the main still really hurting him here. DT going to make its way into oh the natural no. now and maybe get some more kills. Drones are being pulled. He does jump on top of that and gets two more kills. Damn, man. Best just so good with the DT. I mean, just a one kill on the drone, actually, with the good uh, drone uh, drone drill there. But it's still annoying losing anything extra and also losing a little bit of mining time for Queen. It does really frustrate him at any phase of the game. But I don't think he's, like, super behind right now. I still think this game stays very playable for Queen, especially even coming here and snipe some of these high tempers, which aren't actually being defended uh, by anything significant right now. The, the, the Zelt struggle to body block. As you can see, he's just going to come in here and try and snipe off one of these high templars, just like I thought he would go for. But are they able to get the full connection there? does go in to see if he can get the surround. It's really difficult to protect the high templars of Dragoons, which is why you see Protoss players transition to Dragoons so quickly. Um, but yeah, with this uh, Scourge threat kind of zoning out these Corsairs, now the Mutas can come out and threaten these high demons as well. I'm going to be turning best around back to the safety of these cannons. Running back to the cannon here, but the Mutas are going to catch up. Looks like he's going to get one Templar kill here. One Templar, two Templar end up going down. Very nice pickups here for Queen, actually. Kind of evening out this game a little bit, but there's the Mutas getting caught. Finally, the uh, Scourge lost track of those Corsairs. You can see they're chasing them around still, but the Mutas being killed off here is a big deal, and Queen going to start to move forward with his Hydra. He should be looking to take a fourth base relatively soon. This is becoming a large and kind of difficult army to deal with that Bess has fielded, and it's just pure Hydra right now for Queen. Will he make another round of Muta to try and get more uh, Templar snipes, or is it time to switch into Lurker? 
Well, to be fair though, even though the supplies look like a very significant lead for best right now, there's not really much of an air threat from Queen. So most of the supply is just pure Hydro. So there will be a fair critical mass for him to utilize. Maybe he can get some high damage nice with a small pocket auxiliary force of these Hydras. There's still a fighting chance here for Queen to overwhelm best and prevent him from getting this third base online anytime soon. But best instead, like trying to come in for a counter. But in the meanwhile, these uh, Scourge might be finding the connection on this uh, fleet of Corsairs. Beautiful dancing from best using good uh, move commands there to avoid the Scourge from finding their connections and be running past a few of the hydras on the, the exit out finding a good vector to make sure the scourge can never cut off their retreat but it looks like queen's still going to try and hunt these down and try and intercept with those scourge actively out on the map and maybe setting himself up to also swallow up this protoss army should it dare to move out yeah that's a that's a lot of hydras out on the field here looks like the corsairs will be able to turn and kill most of the scourge scourge still chasing though Small group of them do remain. Oh, he's going to make a turn into the Hydra here. Oh, Queen just barely not fast enough to turn all of those Hydras in and completely surround and intercept wow. the, the uh, Corsa there. There is the Lurker transition. No more Muta's going to be made here for Queen for now. Just going to switch into Lurker as he tries to grab a fourth base. I think down in the left is going to be the choice. It looks like the great ape put on his ballerina shoes and leotard and started dancing majestically there with his corsairs and shows that he's not all just br uh, um, brawn there and actually shows some rather majestic, graceful mo uh, movements there. He's moving so fluidly in this game, showing that he has a, a, a little bit of a finesse to him as well. You know, maybe he's a bit misunderstood. This gorilla here, we might have uh, kind of judged him a bit too quickly, Sam. Yeah, that was some some beautiful movement from Best overall, but. Now coming forward with the might of the Protoss army, can he actually break into this third base here? We don't have much on high ground. I don't see a single lurker up there. All the lurkers are burrowed down here at, uh, over towards this natural. He's starting to pop out some more and head around this army, try to get a big surround here. But best realizing that, just going to back away beautifully. Oh man, Hydra's coming over here on the right hand side, getting sprayed down by the storms. Hydra's on the left are fighting these zealots. They're doing a great job, but there's the storm on them as well. Best clearing out everything here. He's bringing forward the observer that has not been sniped. The Corsairs are coming in at a beautiful time to clear out all of these overlords as they come forward. A ton of overlords going down here, and the Dragoon number is still strong. Best rallying forward here. So many units coming from all these gateways. He's not even got his third base online. The probes are just now transferring, but he's already pulling apart Queen. Yeah, the powerful Simeon macro of best right now. Too much for even the defender's advantage of Queen to deal with right now. Supply dropping 77 to 133. And with the armor upgrades on these units, it takes a long time for these Hydras to chew through these Dragoons. It is starting to whittle down this force enough to maybe catch some of these Dragoons on the exit. But here comes another round of units from the best here. Just trying to keep the pressure on and try and get on top of the Zerg production as quickly as possible. Maybe he can start to kill enough of these Hydras as they're popping out to never let Queen really recover and get the critical mass that he needs to keep fighting fighting best out on the map here meanwhile has his third base online and could even take a fourth soon if he so chooses yeah this is this is rough for queen man unfortunately he did not have lurkers on his third hide ground which me meant that he really had to commit to the fight there he had to fight best before he could get up that ramp and kill that base off so queen taking an unfavorable trade there Losing to that massive army, that massive attack that followed up the DT harass earlier on. Best once again on fire here. Who can stop yeah. him? I don't know. I mean, I, they're, they're certainly not a Terran right now. We need like some Mong or someone to fight Best, and we don't have that. We have Royal and Light, both not really the greatest of TVP players. So, yeah, it's looking pretty good for Best and not so good for the Terrans here. Uh oh, we're on Citadel here with Royal versus Best. This is uh, a little bit of a rough map for Terran, I feel. Don't you think, Shun? Oh, absolutely. This is like red alert right now for Terran. This isn't a comfortable situation right now. It's all hands on deck. Like Everyone is scrambling. These uh, SCVs are no longer being paid hourly. Like Their life is at stake. They they dropped the unions right now. They don't even care about uh, making money. They just They just want to survive. Yeah, we want to live to see another day here, and Best is going to do everything in his power to make that not happen. He's going to be looking for the kill as Royal attempts to take a third base. It's so difficult to do on this map. Do you take the base at the 6 o'clock years, Royal, or do you try to take the base 
uh, the mineral only toward the mineral of the middle of the map. I don't think either decision is really a great one, but... Um, I mean, against best, taking a third base seems like a bad idea anyway, right? <laughs> you gotta... You gotta get some damage on him or something. You gotta like slow him down a little bit maybe before you take a third, but um, just going into a normal game, yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, trying to take a third without doing any damage or, or slowing him down, he's just gonna have such a massive army to break you with. Yeah. And he's cross map as well, so a lot of the push timings that Royal could do, he can't do anymore. It's just too risky to go for with these cross map spawns, so he won't probably do anything like that. He did go for 11 gas, I think, so he will have a slightly earlier timing. If he wanted to, he could go for something like a two factory, but like I said, with the cross map spawns, there's no way he's going to try and do anything like that, I imagine. He's going to go for maybe even a three tank push pressure might be just barely on the cards for him, so I don't know what he's going to go for here. Maybe he can force best into like a two base reader play. And uh, maybe slow best down enough so that he can't just go into full gateway man mode. But I, I don't know how you can do it on this cross map spawns here for uh, Royal, especially this is not his favorite matchup for sure. Well, with the uh, cross map by the same token, you know, best with this early zealot not going to be able to get much pressure going. Um, we'll see how this goes here. The first zealot making its way just now through the middle of the map. Or the second zealot, excuse me. The first zealot's actually coming down here right now. The two zealots are going to be able to put up a pretty good fight against these two marines. Uh, but a vulture is going to be coming out here soon. What is going to happen with Royal here? He's going to have to retreat into the main. At least the factory is already done. But this is this is a little bit scary right now. Two zealots. Oh, great block. Oh, my God. A fantastic block here. An amazing pullback as well. He loses one SCV, and he's going to kill both of these zealots, I think. A one Marine goes down. One Marine goes down. The zealot is going to fall. This probe gets a full scout of the main, but that was a near-perfect hold from Royal. Yeah, I would say that's almost best case scenario for Royal. Uh, obviously, he did lose a Marine, but besides that, I would say this is pretty much about as good as it's going to get for him in this game. So I think he's going to be a little bit happy about that. It's just what he needs to feel a little bit more confident and at ease in this game here. And with the cross map spawns, it's much more difficult for best to pressure him early game as well. So he can really delay making a bunker on top of that. So he can now optimize despite having some low HP Marines. As the one vulture here, don't want to lose it like JYJ did in game number one. Got to be careful. Or was that game number two? Game number two, excuse me. Mm. Got to keep that vulture alive. Want to be able to lay down those mines out there on the map. And he will be able to do so here as his natural comes up. And I, I like what you were saying there is going to be able to delay his bunker for quite a long time. You know, get an earlier factory up here. Maybe get an earlier uh, armory out as well. I love this as, uh, as well here from Royal. Look at that. He sends an SCV out on the map to repair his vulture here. So that it won't get picked off as easily by the dragons. He's going to be able to slip in here and make sure that there's no third. We'll be able to lay down a couple of mines here. Best not going to be able to kill all those mines. But he does get one shot down on each of them which will make clearing them uh, later a little bit easier. Um, no, no. Mu did the shift hold micro on laying those mines as well, which allows you to not only plant the mine slightly faster, but it helps the, the vulture slide off of the mine as you plant it to keep uh, planting more and more mines. So, oh, you might think of losing that vulture just barely. Look at Best Game Sense right now. is on fire. That's insane from Best, what we just saw. Understanding that both mines were one shot, picks off the vulture at range because you barely on the hex grid that wasn't in range to uh, activate on the Dragoon, and then also shuffling forward just ever so slightly with whole position of micro to pick off the two remaining mines and mine sweep them out for free so he can now get his nexus on curve at six minutes i'm, I'm blown away that was fantastic by best my god the range coming online there managing to kill the vulture and clear the mines without any observer with just a single dragoon really really well done by him Again, we don't have a bunker here for Royal. He's been able to cut a lot of corners, but Best not taking any damage. He is on curve right now with this pylon wall coming up here. I doubt he'll uh, take any probe damage while transferring either. He's just super spread out in his main. He's ready for anything. Dragoons in the natural, Dragoons in the main, Dragoon at the third. He is uh, making sure that no 
sort of early damage can come down here. No drop play can come. Luckily, Royal's not going for anything like that. Luckily for the Terran, he's not going for something like that. But uh, just best, ready for everything. He has his first Observer heading across the map now. He spots the mines here in the middle. A great spread of mines from Royal. He's going to get into the main base and see what's the follow-up plan from him too. Yeah, Royal didn't even soften up any of these Dragoons with a mine hit or anything, so he definitely doesn't feel confident enough to push out onto that with any kind of three tank push timing. He knows he has to be in full passive mode right now. He might actually... Okay, so he's going to go out with a small auxiliary force here. Four tanks and one Goliath. He feels like maybe he can come out a little bit. He might also just be faking this because he knows that he's being watched right now by this Observer and trying to like uh, fake out best just a little bit. It does uh, confirm the Reaver um, timing uh, actually with that scan, so that's one thing we got going for Royal here is that he can now adjust himself with his timing usually as Terran the choice is whether or not you're making the armory the the, the the academy or the engineering bay and what order you make those in the early game is basically your tech options as Terran and the sequence in which you get those is will dictate the ebb and flow of the game we can see here that Royal elected to go for quite an early armory which means he can get these like four goliaths out really early on and start picking off shuttles and observers quite efficiently which a lot of Terran players have been going for recently and trying to optimize their builds and delaying their academy and the engineering bay timing as long as possible yeah, this, this is an interesting play from Royal, right? I think you're exactly you hit the nail on the head there, Shun, with what he was doing. He just pulled the uh, tanks away from the natural as the observer was coming in to kind of hide and obfuscate that army and, and kind of give Best a little bit of a shock there. Like, where where's the army? Wait, wait, are you attacking me right now? But Best doesn't panic at all. He just goes with his two gate right into Reaver. And he's checking the third base. He sees no third base, has a fourth base of his own online. He has not been faced by this at all. So I think a great heads up play by Royal, but not tricking best in the slightest here. He is just right on course. The way he's playing right now, he's going to get into a great macro game here. Uh, and it's going to be very, very hard for Royal to keep up. I mean, yeah, basically, Best has done the greediest curve you can do as Protoss. You can do, like, um, basically making zero units and just throwing down Nexus, obviously, but um, he didn't do that, but he, he did do the safest version of the greed, which is, like, taking your Nexus at six, taking your uh, fourth at, like, eight or something. So he is, he's got a crazy economic curve right now of just two gateways and Reaver to slow down any potential push out of Royal. It's the best-case scenario for Best going forward here. And now he's going to just start laying down tons of gateways, probably up to, like, nine gateways for production like we saw in the last game but this time has a much more explosive economy so uh, yeah I, Royal's not going to be able to do anything for so long he's going to maybe have to go all the way up to like a 2-1 timing here before he can even think about moving out yeah this is uh, this is a little bit scary I think that uh, the, the fear right now for me is Royal probably just going to aim for like an 11 minute uh, third base here he's gonna slowly push forward he has his upgrades going the 11 minute third is a very normal timing for a third base but best is cutting corners and getting bases out way quicker there we go gonna back away after picking off a vulture here royal threatening the move forward but i think he's just gonna take a third right now he's double armory with not that many factories behind this there's no way he's gonna be able to push with like three factories in his main right now Oh, absolutely not. Um, yeah, the ratio of gateway to um, factory would just be far too of a deficit. So he definitely will, will be taking a third base and playing much more passive. Meanwhile, Best will be trying to skirmish, do a little pressure in the main base with some Reaver harass now, uh, as the turrets are just barely coming online. But he's not quite moving in just yet. So this turret might finish up in the nick of time. Okay, not going to quite finish get this, this turret. But now the shuttle is kind of locked into the base. But he will commit to this attack. He's going to be dropping the Reaver into the main base. The SUV pork does come. It only gets two SUVs like in the other game. But now, Maybe going to find some more. Gets another two. That's four SUVs thus far. This Zealot, meanwhile, picking away at this turret to open up this position more for some potential micro as the units come to trade. So that's getting a lot of uh, compensation for this aggression right now. Six SUVs also have gone down and a Vulture too. Does get the pick up. And now he's going to try and come. Oh, the Zealot. That's a beautiful play from Bess. He picks off the turret that was at the north threshold. So now he opened up a path of retreat. Bess is playing so good today, Sam. Wow, that's some... Well, that's some really good thinking from Bess, man. This is an intelligent ape right here. Look at that. Dropping the one zealot to kill the turret. Dropping the second zealot to kill the second turret. And then going for the reaver damage. Now he's got 
uh, a shuttle with a couple of zealots and a reaver inside uh, to follow up attack here royal pulled a lot of his forces back into the main and he's got a very weak setup over here at this third base he doesn't have a lot of mines uh ready in front of this army and this is just so many zealots oh my god that's so many wow. zealots that are coming forward here he needs crazy amounts of mines and tons more vultures here. he's got 900 minerals in the bank right now royal kind of slipping on his uh production and it's just going to be completely overwhelmed here by bass oh my god an absolute bopping here the cheeks are being clapped right now look at that zealot number this is crazy. This is what best does best. He literally just makes like a control group to one and a half control groups worth of dragoons, then like two control groups worth of zealots, and he just goes oh, smash. And it's crazy how good his execution. He busts open Terran positions, which look unbreakable. He's the best in the business at doing what you see on the screen right now, and that's why he's got such an overwhelming force. He's so efficient at trading, and that's basically what Starcraft is. It's a game of trading, and when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter how much of an army you can produce if you can't fight well with it. And best is the best at doing that at this stage of the game. He's really muscling through. Royal now getting on top of the Terran position, Terran position and this production is just getting overwhelmed there's some tanks squeezing out but they're just getting murdered as soon as they pop out this is brutal to watch saying Terran I love your case I mean best making Royal look like a C rank Terran player Jesus GG guys G -G. absolutely insane is it too late to change my predictions for ASL I think we're gonna see best in the finals man <laughs> I've been saying it before. I said in the previous cast that Bess is looking kind of crazy. I wouldn't be super shocked if this might be his year to shine. Well, I don't. I don't know if we've seen anyone get quite as bopped as Royal just got bopped by uh, Bess there in that last game. And now we're here with Bess versus Action. Yeah, if Bess is really on top of his game and and uh, you know improving. Uh, versus Zerg, there's there's nothing that can stop him, man. He is so good versus Terran right now. It's insane. I mean, th yeah, that game kind of really resonated with me. It, it reminded me of like one of my childhood RTS games, uh, KKND, and. I, the reason why is because KKD stands for crush, kill, and destroy. And that's exactly what we saw this gorilla do to um, that poor helpless Terran last game royal. Uh, literally ripped off his uh, own arms and uh, beat him to death with them. Uh, really, really finessed, finessed him as well. It wasn't just like a, a brute force kind of thing. He put on his uh, little monkey hat and uh, showed some real intelligence and foresight and understanding that I'm really impressed by best. Yeah, absolutely. The the dancing with the dragoon was fantastic. It reminds me of, you know, those old uh, videos of Bisu, you know, dancing around the mines and, you know, perfectly handling an attack. But this was just a, a fantastic early defense. He got all the timings out perfectly. He had the insane macro to follow it up and, you know, eventually overwhelming and just completely out macroing. Uh, Royal there not an easy feat by any means making that player look like making Royal look like a C rank player is not something that everybody can do that guy is insanely good but now here versus action on dark origin what will best bring out oh he's gonna slip the zealot around oh this is so painful zealot gonna come in here towards the main base lings are gonna have to turn around and head back home right now he will be able to get into a good position here I think with the probe and first zealot Getting up into the main and like going behind the mineral patches is super annoying here with the uh, nine uh, with the over pool. You should be able to deal with that. No problem. But this is this is going to be annoying here for action right now. Yeah, Bess is demonstrating very good match preparation, which really gives me strong hopes for his ASL run here. I'm, I'm really impressed by his foresight in how to um, best navigate the very, uh, not only the earliest uh, execution of the game, but also like the later mid to uh, later. Hold on, actually. With the probe behind it, might trade exceptionally well. Beautiful shuffling of the probe, delaying as much as possible. Has two kills on this setup thus far. Trying to get a third. Does manage to find the connection with those side blades. Not going to rotate around to the right. Might get a fourth as well. So four, four zerglings for that one zealot. Pretty 
cost efficient trade there for best but action's happy to take that as well it's basically 100 minerals for 100 minerals not the, the worst but two lava uh, was that those two link uh, those four two pairs of links there so that does kind of limit the early game drone uh potential here of action being forced to make so many links so early he would have liked to kind of optimize that a tiny bit but instead just being forced to dump all of his lava and minerals into links early on and now a lot of the, uh, damage has been done to this third hatchery it might make it susceptible to a counter attack later on as well but beautiful strand on that zealot by action going to be sniping that and preventing this other one from getting behind the mirror so beautiful play from action actually gets some really great trades here and that's going to be giving him some great conversation going forward against this uh, gateway opening i really thought the best was going to run behind the mineral patches there but he got a little greedy he wanted to deal more damage to the hatchery and he ends up losing both of those and now a lot of links popping out here he did get that earlier guess uh, i think he just mined 100 and made a link speed so Actually thinking about going all in right now. This is actually not that good, I feel. This uh, the cannon I mean, is just about done here. He's gonna start to hit the, the gateway. Do not allow the links pass. He needs to pull probes right now. Try to build a building behind this. There's the probes being pulled forward. The the cannon about to finish. Can he build another building here? He builds another forge. There we go. He builds the forge and blocks this entrance. The zealots being pulled back here. The cannon doing so much damage. The probes holding the line right now. This is really, really close. He's just gonna have to pull a bunch more probes, I think, from the main base if he wants to hang on. He's pulling the probes right now but Lings are actually getting in here and they're going to get on top of this cannon now. Oh, he's not going to run by there. He's going to try and commit to the cannon. He's now going to not, not be able to get up the ramp. Beautiful hold from Best here as he does the drill from the main base. I really feel like Action had uh, a little bit of a misread on that situation. Should have ignored that cannon and opened up a hole on the left and ran straight up on the left-hand flank. Did not go for that. He was too worried about the ramp already being blocked. And he, he misread read the game state a little bit there. I did actually like his uh, aggression here. I think this is actually a good method that, he, that he's going for. He just a little bit uh, botched the execution. Did target the pros. But Goni coming in again... Does get the run by like I think he should have gone for the first time round. Now gonna put a little bit of pressure on the main base, but he's not gonna get the kind of damage that he was looking for. Only four make it into the main base, but without a zealot here, it does make it very difficult for him to hold on here. Without really good micro from best, these four links can do a lot of damage with a bit of micro. Yeah, he's gonna come in, try to get some probe kills. We do have a cannon being built here in the main. I think this cannon actually could have been built a little bit sooner. There's just almost no chance that you're gonna be able to prevent all links from running up into the main base. Or any, prevent, you know, any links from getting up into the main base is what I mean. And he's doing a great job, you know, holding off with the pros. So this is a lot of lost mining time here. The cannon yeah. is about to finish now. There we go. Cannon done. Not that many probes went down. A little bit of lost mining time. But I think that Bess holds this pretty darn well. Follow up going to be a 973. I think you have to go for the 973 here. At the very least, you need to fake a 973 in this situation and force even more cannons out of best. We need to get more compensation for this early game lava and ling investment that we went for. We didn't quite get the kind of kills we were hoping for. Might catch one of these probes on the uh, transfer to the main. Not quite able to do so. Uh, might actually... Oh, why is he not attacking the gas in the main base? I feel like those three links could have chipped away at that gas quicker. Now he realizes, thank you, action. Yeah, you should have gone for that a little bit earlier. Now you won't have the timing maybe to kill that. Right, so we're going to get some damage onto that gas. I think a Zealot is coming into the main, though. Yeah, Zealot is here. He will not be able to stop that gas from mining, unfortunately. Citadel coming down here in the face of these lings. is building a Corsair here back at home. Uh, going to send that out on the map and scout these uh, Hydras coming here pretty soon. But we've already got Hydras on the way, I think, on that right-hand side. And he might be able to avoid... Oh, no, the drones. <gasps> Oh, Wait, no, is he going to mine no, no, no. the back he, here? He's going to mine it out. He's going to mine it out. Okay, this is interesting. So um, there's not enough zealots also to really plug this ramp as well. He's going to be transitioning into going Corsairs to scout what's going on. He's going to be thinking it's a bus coming. Sees the Hydras and thinking that it, all the game state is under control. Just needs to throw down cannons at the natural expansion. Thinks that he's safe. But meanwhile, this back is being mined out. There's some like destination kind of way of thinking here from action. I really like it. This is exactly how you want to approach this map in this situation. But he needs one more drone he, he actually. Drone. To mine the cell. He, he said the right about the drones okay he's oh got his own come up a little bit of a miss oversight here finally realizes the sense of a drone big miscalculation from action showing that even the pro gamers can't handle simple math sometimes <laughs> looks like these hydras are gonna kill this gateway here at the front maybe kill the forge as well and then run around to the back and run through that little corner there he sees one he sees a drone returning with a mineral what do you think he's thinking at this point where's that drone coming from <laughs> i hope that best I mean. has figured it out here but i uh, i doubt that he's actually gonna 
you know, be able to deal with this in time. He's sending something up on the high ground. He's going to build a pylon here, try to make maybe start a cannon, but it's going to be too little too late, I think. Here comes the probe. He's going to spot mm. these hydras coming in. Action going to come through the Action back door. Coming. Oh my god, there's only three, four zealots here on the high ground. That's all he has to fight right now. The hydra bust has been sent to the main base. Now, this is a dark origin only, destination only build type that you've got to deal with. you got to keep in mind as the Protoss player, but he just did not know that it was coming. He's going to end up being taken out here. Finally, somebody managing to take down best with a sneaky play here. Action running him over here. Very well done by him. That's a play I've got to keep in my mind. You know, I have... I have this map uh, banned uh, for my ladder yeah, sessions yeah. because it's such an annoying map to deal with as Zerg, but that is a very interesting uh, move there from action. I just, I guess I need to remember that it's five drones to mine out that mineral patch, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So all, all the way from the early days of a destination, you used to have the same thing, except the middle the middle field was on the ramp, so you had to line out the middle fields on the ramp. But with it being so far away, you can't even scout it. Uh, really, uh, a misplay here, I feel like, from this. Should have built a pile on there or something to check for that. Yeah, that was really the only way he was going to get taken out there after holding the Ling all in. He had enough cannons to hold a follow-up 973, but getting around the back was the right call not having a pile on the wrong call here from best uh, to spot that mineral patch and he ends up getting knocked out here but a great performance by him overall finally best has been eliminated i thought he was maybe gonna go all the way there but here we are with light versus action on troy should be an interesting matchup here we've seen a lot of good uh, and fun the TVZs on this map so far, although it is it is a very strange, crazy map. It's probably the the craziest map that we have in the map pool right now. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one thing I would like to point out quickly is that uh, like did a like a perfect SCV split here. You also like got the the bot the bottom SCV on the second patch on the bottom, which is the most optimal on the bottom left position here. Like it mines perfectly diagonally and bounces off the corner of the CC. So like he's gonna have a really nice early uh, sixth SCV timing here, and that's gonna help him do his eight racks uh, really quickly and put on a little bit of pressure onto action if he goes for his 12 hatch timing and also does have open up a win condition of messing with these gases and being annoying as well which is one of the elements of this map is this gas and uh, as Terran you both want to put pressure on the Zerg while also protecting your own gas because if these gases do become killed at some point in the game it really does frustrate the game state turning these corner bases into islands so it's a bit of a weird one. Oh look at action actually going for 11 pool I like this a lot from action it does prevent him from having the option of going lurkers in this game potentially but it does enable him to um, control the game state and the counter this eight racks 11 pool is basically the counter to eight racks and also still allows you to go for a very strong two hatch meter timing so i really do like this from action here yeah it makes sense on this map it, it, basically every almost every time i've played on this map against terran it's been an eight racks or a bbs in the middle of the map very very annoying to deal with every single time it happens because you know you cannot lose control of your natural if they kill those assimilators you're just going to be locked into one base never going to be able to get another um expansion out on the map and it's so so frustrating so you know going for an earlier pool it makes a lot of sense here light is going to be pumping out these marines and keeping them back at home and going for a little bit of timing but as soon as he sees this pool finished in the main i think he's going to change his mind about that well i'm <laughs> Action got his hatchery down at 207 after doing 11 pool gas. Like, I can't even put that into words at how good the mineral optimization on action is to get that timing. Like, people with almost perfect mineral optimization would struggle to get that at 208. So he got that at 207.5. So crazy optimization here from action. And being on the right side as well, like, I'm really impressed by him. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy how good these uh, pro players are at optimizing their drone mining you know getting those uh perfect returns every single time in the early game makes a huge difference plus the uh splitting in the early game here comes the scv train to follow up with this eight racks he's gonna pull a ton of scvs and this is gonna be very very wow. hard to hold on even with you know the ultimate counter here which was as you said the 11 pool <laughs> this is this is just so many SCVs to deal with. As long as they're in front of the Marines and body blocking for them, 
It's going to be nearly impossible to hold on. He's bringing out a ton of drones, though, to try and fight this. Trying to dive on top of the Marines as they're coming forward here. Fighting with the drones and the links at the same time. He hasn't allowed any of these Marines into the bunker yet. And he's blocking the Marines behind this. He's actually blocking his own links, though, from getting on top of the Marines, oh, unfortunately. No. Oh, my God, action. It did such a good job of surrounding and blocking those Marines, but... The Marine there finding a safe haven over top of that gas geyser manages to survive. And a lot of these SCVs are still here to add that DPS onto the hatchery. Can he pop out enough links here to actually break this? I, I'm, I'm not confident that he can. This is a great adjustment from Light here to send a lot more SCVs than is usual. But now we have the link speed kicking in from this faster pull time. Going to be trying to get on top of that bunker. Does start targeting and tries to finish off the hatchery. Might not be able to get it. Does pick off all of this beautiful hold here from action. This is one of the reasons why Eleven Pool is so good because you have such a faster um, link speed timing that eventually, even if they do a great initiation on that rush, you can still just overwhelm with speed links here. And now he has a strong two hatch muter timing to follow up. Will he put him on pressure in the natural expansion? More lost mining time from Light. Two SCVs come to the line, trying, but he doesn't able to get the body block. Even there's a hole on the left hand side. The links get into the main base, and now he's got more things threatening the front. While some links are going to get into the main, frustrating the barracks timing going up. So now I'm not even going to be getting the second barracks online to have the bio that he needs to deal with this mutant threat and not able to maybe even finish building this engineering base soon. Oh man, he's getting a ton of damage here in the main. Four links, such a pain to deal with here. Light is falling apart. Action is likely to take this game. He just needs to follow up with some really good mutilist control and he should be able to take an, a big advantage of this game maybe even the win here light doesn't even have a natural expansion yet i mean action doesn't have many drones uh, over there either but he kills the scv on the left hand side i'm surprised he didn't try to run in after doing that he actually runs no. out some of his links there he, he actually, it's actually, it's actually perfect execution of 11 pool. When, when you're 11 pool, you don't want to lose your links. You don't want to risk committing to an attack because you must maintain enough links out on the map to not die before your muter timings. There is a still way that he can lose this game before mm. the muters hatch. So the only way he can lose is if he loses the links and light moves across and kills this one sunken. So it's actually really imperative that he keeps at least four to six links alive here. He will be able to do that, keeping alive those six links and building a sunken colony on high ground. This is just pure desperation play here from Light going double racks with no expansion behind it. He's going to try and come across the map with those first medics and break through here. The hatchery is so low, only 180 HP. Action really cut, cut it close to the wire there when he was saving that hatchery, just barely breaking the bunker in time. The second something can come up here, he knows... 100% all he needs to do is live right now. He's going to counterattack with the Lings. There is a fire bat here in this wall. So diving on top of that is kind of crazy, but he will try to kill that. He does pick that off and buys a little bit more time here for that second, second sunken colony to finish. I think that's all action needed to do. And with that play, I think he's just about managed to clutch this one out. The Marines are going to come across the field here, but two sunkens on high ground. How do you ever break that? Mm, well, that one link running into the map, uh, running into the main base, might have looked a little bit suicidal, but it actually showed him the exact timing of that E base. And now he can make much better decisions on where he goes with his muters when. So now he knows when it's a good time to pressure with his muters, when it's a good time to pull back and uh, go back home to defense. And now he can come in here and finish off this SEV just before. Oh, he does he actually kill the SEV. He was trying to come in here. He knew the timing of the E base. And he was going to come back into the main base at the perfect time to stop the E base from finishing. Didn't quite get that timing with these uh, muters, but he did go for it at least. And now he's going to be sh uh, shuffling around with these muters, prone on some more and more pressure onto the economic prowess of uh, Light by coming in and killing some of these SCVs with just a handful of muters. There are only three muters he's got right now. Takes uh, three volleys to kill an SCV. If only he had a fourth uh, muter, he would have been able to double shot that um, SCV down and prevent that eBay from finishing even. Yeah, there are some more muters coming across the map now. So this harassment force will become much, much stronger here. And this is a real problem for Light right now. He's going to have to retreat to the main. All he's got is this small bio force here to ward away these mutas what is his follow-up plan is it going to be some sort of you know a factory into a starport or something like that he needs to do something here to ward away these mutas and prevent himself from taking massive damage just building you know a whole bunch of turrets i don't think is the answer right now 
Yeah, yeah Light's really uh, one of the best in the business at how he controls his bio and how he aligns the Marines to engage the, the mutas quite perfectly. But there's so many win conditions for actions right now. He's kind of using like these depots to bait out one force of the bio while the other Marines have to stay back. There's not quite enough turrets out to really kind of secure these zones from the mobility uh, of these mutas. And Light is really worried about these gases getting under control by action because then he has to come out in a funnel, which then can be micro down very cost efficiently by the stack of mutas here. Now he's going to go use his other win condition here of fight fighting at this other depot and keep trading off this bio force slowly but surely really frustrating um light right now not able to give him a, a hope of really coming back in this game he can go for a, a valkyrie here to try and gain some sort of air superiority but it's a little bit of a gamble because one pair of scourge would just be a, a death sentence here for him yeah i think that might be the only play get a valkyrie out and try to push across the map with the marine medic break the natural that that seems to be the the one way that maybe light could win this game i don't think taking his natural is going to be on the table here he's probably got the factory back at home he's still pumping off of just two barracks uh we've got a hydralist then started here for action action just has so many ways that he can play this out and there's no real way to figure it out for light right now except for with his one scanner here in the main that's all he can use to kind of glean what's going to be the follow-up for action and it could be any number of things and action can pretty much do them all at once and still be fine here yeah and he's, he's there's no way that light can really move out for quite some time and he doesn't want to have to build too many turrets either he's already got just one base worth of economy if he makes too many turrets he'll have no hope of keeping up with the economic curve of the game meanwhile we have a transition from action getting the hydro down make sure he can get lurkers out so he can then take a third base and be safe to any move outs later on and with this map control of the mutilist keeping light in check it's going to be very difficult for light to navigate this game going forward he's going to go up into his one base tech get the star port online go into sort of like four racks one port production in his one base you can do four racks and one, one starport producing vessels on one base of economy for Terran. It's very efficient, but look at action being so great at coming in here and just shaving off as many of these bio forces as possible, preventing any kind of critical mass being achieved here by Light. Yeah, Light really not able to do anything right now. He's got a lot of Marine Medic, and he's, uh, you know, he's got them uh, ready to move out here, but... Uh, can, can he actually bring them to bear somewhere that's actually going to matter? He's losing his assimilator right now. If he loses both of these assimilators, Marines and Medics will not be able to move out at all. Hydras are popping now, but the Lurkers are not finished. This is the one moment, the one opportunity that maybe Light could try to break through here before these Lurkers are done. After, there's no hope at all. So he's going to try and lay it all on the line here. Try to break through this natural before that occurs. Action here. Desperately throwing down a few extra sunken colonies. He knows this is it. This is the only opportunity for Light to break through. He's going to have to lay it all on the line. Here we go. Stim running up this ramp here. He's going to gun down the Hydralisk. Immediately targeting down one sunken at a time. More Marines making their way up here from the flank, but the Mutas are going to actually turn on them. Last sunken colony is going to go down here. We still have quite a few Mutas, and the Lurkers have popped. All the Marines are going to be forced back. Ouch, this is, this is it. This is all that Light had. That's everything that he was banking on, and there goes all his Medics as well. The Lurkers moving forward to pick off that last Marine. Perfectly optimized uh, hold here for action, killing off everything. And really, Light is out of this one. There's really, there's no way to come back right now. He's trying to do something, but what is he supposed to do from this position? A dropship heading across has got nothing inside of it. And there's already oh, Scourge. Wow. Oh, it does oh, have Marine wow. in there. Oh, God. It was there full of Marine. There is not much light <laughs> left in the end of this tunnel saying, GG, finally cool. What uh, a game. Wow. I, for I forgot that we couldn't see what was inside the... the uh, dropship here this is a, a live game on the kcm zen but yeah getting shut down there damn damn action just damn. shutting him out completely i gotta learn that build man that is super super good in eight <laughs> racks and i can teach you that build if you want to i would love to know it and i mean that's something that happens all the time on the ladder uh that terran players will go for the eight racks and then with the big scv pull it becomes so so scary but action holding it off brilliantly the Protoss squad gonna send out Snow here to take down Action. If that doesn't work, we've got Bisu in the background there, the PVZ specialist. So I think that uh, we may end up seeing a Protoss win here once again, but Action 
showing some real life in that last game. Mm, yeah, Snow could have a go and see if he can land on top in this game and uh, take away the action uh, that we've seen live and kicking in this great series, this great week. Um, uh, even though it, um, Terran has no hope of securing the, the spot and what have you, like, it doesn't really matter. We see them uh, doing really well in the TVZ side of things, looking really strong, and uh, also seeing some great games. And I'm, I'm really excited for the semifinals, but also it's great to see... Um, the likes of best like showing that he's not only performing he's, he's showing like he might even be taking a really good like, golden road in asl maybe yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to his performance man really looking forward to seeing how he does there and this game i think action uh you know he should be able to put up a good performance his late game play is fantastic you know, retro is an interesting map with a lot of different high grounds, very defendable locations, and uh, Snow has been leveling up over and over again. He's been getting stronger and stronger, but Action still has that late game prowess, man. He's still got that really, really strong uh, macro sense, so we'll see if Snow can take an early advantage or if he does need to fight Action in the late game, how can he perform there? Yeah, in PvZ, I kind of like action reminds me a little bit of effort. Effort does kind of what action does a little bit better in ZVP, but action's still really phenomenally good at it. He's one of the best aggressive macro zergs we got. Um, but I guess Snow, Snow's been really uh, performing. Like you say, he's been kind of like leveling up, you know, kind of like st uh, training in the hyperbolic time chamber and uh, really raising his power level. And uh, let's see how he lines up in PvZ. He's usually a PvT specialist, and recently he has showed quite a lot of promise with his PvZ. So I'm curious how he lines up with the likes of Action, who's throwing down his third base right now. Yeah, Action, not going to be able to come across the map and deal any early damage here, but he's, you know, limited the number of lings that he's producing down to just two. So. Really, even without seeing the natural of the Protoss player, you know, making the right decisions here and just droning up very, very heavily. Bunch of drones going to be popping out here in the natural, or in the main, excuse me, and Snow's going to see that. He's safe back at home with his cannon, and his nexus is relatively early here. Uh, so, a very normal opener between these two players. Uh, you know, very, very like 2009 here so far for uh, Snow versus Action. Yeah, I'm curious though, with the horizontal expansion, what we there is the yeah, there's the hydro. I was about to say we're gonna see a, probably a hydro den at 3:30 here because of the horizontal expansions and close spawns of uh, here. I think this is a great way of uh, approaching this game uh, because of the buildings being wider than they are taller here. When you've got this sort of like horizontal alignment of the natural, it makes it much easier for the hydro bus because what some Protoss players will also do is they'll put their cannons right up against the forge to protect it from a fake hydro bus, which means you can commit with just speed hydras only, like four to six hydras pick off those two cannons while you flood speedlings and just overwhelm the zealot for it well with the pro being here and watching everything i think that action is uh playing a bit of a mind game right now he's uh will i won't dying uh, on snow right now am i gonna actually do it am i not going to actually do it and how many how how hard am i going to commit to this bust here he sees one hydra popping out so yeah he's gonna do something with this hydra den but how much is he actually going to pull here? How many units is he going to make? Uh, when is he going to start to drone up here? All of these are questions in Snow's head right now, and he has to answer them uh, perfectly, or he could just die or end up in a very, very difficult macro position. We did just check the 9 o'clock at the base to see how many drones are there. There was only one. Now I think there's another. So he's going to try and see if there's going to be uh, two or three drones only made there, which would be indicative of a 973. And no matter what happens, that's probably what Action will want to telegraph to him. Meanwhile, Bear's going to be seeing if he can move out on the map with a couple of Zealots to pressure just a little bit here, frustrate the timings. But Action's going to have none of it. With the speed kicking in, he's going to be able to get on top of those Zealots and force them all the way back to the safety um, of these cannons. Three will go down now. He'll be getting a minimum of three cannons here. But he needs to be a little bit careful because Action can uh, elect to a bust here. With the, the cannons being pressed right up against the forge like this, a fake hydro bust isn't as optimal. He might still go for that. Um, anyway just to not have to commit here after being scouted so heavily so you might want to uh, risk losing the game just uh, instead of maybe just try and get some compensation with her uh, waiting for the range to finish and maybe getting lucky and picking off the gateway here yeah it looks like a fake hydro bus to me the cannon placement is perfect there's only three cannons here he's not over committed with the number of cannons uh, snow has answered the question i think perfectly here will i won't i well we're going to just do a little bit of will i 
and Snow answering that with just a few cannons here, a few zealots. He's not going to be able to, or he's not going to be losing this early forge. He should be able to get the plus one done here. The range is going to finish up soon, so we'll see. But here's the zealots coming out and pressuring, pushing everything back. He should be able to snipe this uh, overlord. And with the overlord going down, a single DT will prevent the kill on the forge. This is perfect play from Snow so far. Yeah, everything we see from the players here is extremely deliberate. Uh, so we see that the, the Zelts coming out to zone away the Hydra's just long enough for the Corsair to do its job and not be picked off by the, the spines of those, um, needle spines of those uh, Hydra's there. So really great execution from Snow, uh, just to make sure he's getting a, the slowdown on the economy of action right now. He is currently blocked at 43, 40, uh, 44, um, to, yeah, 43, 43. So he can't actually make any drones or hydras for the time being. Like even just a small slowdown like that, waiting for another overlord to pop is a really big deal for Zerg. Like ideally, even though you can go up to three lava, you don't want to. It's wasted production time and wasted like econ economic boon. Uh, as Zerg, you want to squeeze out um, as many drones as quickly as possible. So it's going to be frustrating the timings just a little bit here of the Zerg while also going double forge in the main base after losing that in the the natural like you would usually so everything's going to be quite crisp here for snow going into the mid game phase and i think he's finding himself a nice little game state here yeah so he does lose the uh, forge there in in the natural but he didn't even start the upgrade there he just uh starts two more forges in the main gonna get those double upgrades rolling here and action adding on up to six uh, hatches that's an interesting position for the evolution chamber blocking anything from running behind his mineral patches rather than like you know it. setting up a better uh sim city i'm not sure if i agree with it but we'll see how it ends up working out here action coming forward with quite a few of these hydras but back at home he's going to be losing overlords once again it's no finding some damage here uh gonna get this overlord might lose a corsair he's got to pull away now actually keeping all of those alive very nicely done by him it was exceptionally uh, well done by him to get an Overlord kill at this stage of the game while there's this many Hydras out, um, with only two Corsairs to boot, and now getting on top of these Hydras as well, going to be bullying them, getting a fairly good trade with these Zealots, and really annoying action here, because there's a just a low enough count of Hydras where the Zealots can still get something done here, and just barely not going to be able to pump out enough to deal with that. And that could have come all the way down from the Overlord dying early. He just barely didn't have the critical mass that he needed to fight there. Whereas if that Overlord wasn't originally sniped uh, earlier on in the game at 43 supply, maybe he would have had just the, enough hydras to prevent that from happening. So yeah, this is starting to escalate a little bit in the snow start and snowball, pun intended. Spire here in the natural for action. He was hiding it in kind of an interesting spot, right? He put it uh, right above that hatchery. So it kind of looks like a... Uh, it's also under the overlord so it's hard to click but it looks like a sunken colony being morphed there and i think he was planning to maybe pop out a bunch of muta yeah it looked like mutas are gonna pop here however back at home you know pretty decent number of corsair he could continue this corsair production as well i don't know if this is gonna work out well for action He's going to come forward try to maybe snipe some templar or something popping out he sees them or he sends in the mutas and now that Snow sees it, will he just continue to produce uh, a bunch of uh, Corsair? Oh my god, he's going to get these two Mutas? Oh, wow. oh that's oh, so wow. bad. That's super bad saying. He only has five Corsairs here, so they can't actually one-shot the, uh, the, the the Scourge without perfect connections. But he does not really worry too much. As long as he keeps an eye on that and doesn't just like lose the Corsairs are free without even paying attention, then not really much can go wrong for him here. So he's being very uh, brazen right now. He feels very confident that he can just come out here and be a little bit cocky with how he starts to engage and throw himself at uh, the wave of action right now. He does actually look pretty good on the supply county. He's finding oh, he's be careful not to lose any of these uh, Corsairs, like I was saying. He needs to be paying attention at all times, making sure he can find the vectors that he needs to avoid um, uh, being cut off from retreat and getting the vectors that he needs to retreat to safety here with these Corsairs. Doesn't lose any of these for free. 100 gas is a lot to lose right now. We need to pump things like Observers and Templars. So he doesn't want to lose any of those uh, beautiful air superiority units while he's also putting across the map. He's going to be rotating around to the southern threshold of this uh, 9 o'clock position, trying to prevent this uh, fourth going up maybe. Yeah, I think he wants to get in here and actually execute an attack with the uh, with the Templar suddenly coming out of the fog of war. Actually, it's not going to have a lot of room to retreat to. Backing away, though. Snow, actually, I think he wanted to get up to that ramp uh, at the bottom of the third base. And then suddenly the Templar, you know, appear there and start to throw down storms. There's the first storm. Getting a kill on an Overlord and some kills on these Hydras as well. One Templar is going to get sniped by some Lings. Not doing a very good job body blocking with the Zealots. It's very hard to do. 
with just pure uh with just pure zealot stop the uh templar from going down another couple of storms come down unfortunately a lot of that damage going on to the zealots but it looks like he can jump on top of this hatch and maybe kill that off unfortunate that action didn't build the hatch up there on the high ground in the bottom left and one uh one lurker gonna pop out here does eat a storm though uh, along with the zealot attack that's gonna be able to pick that off and links coming forward here some drones coming down action really wants to secure this bottom left and he is, uh, you know, focused on doing so. Snow, his first attack, actually dealing a lot. Oh my god, a 12 kill? What? Oh, wow, man, I thought Action... Promoted. I thought Action held that. I thought he had that. He has so many units down at the bottom left. You know, trying to secure that next base. How did he lose 12 kills? How did he lose so many drones to the Zealot? Zealot's making their way into the natural. Oh my god. Yeah, he, he made like a round of links to deal with that, but there were six zealots that he, he rotated around up top, and with plus one upgrades, was able to two-shot most of those links down and had enough zealots remaining to, to deal damage to the drones. Now in the natural expansion, ravaging the drone line there as well. Like, Snow is just looking great right now. He's on so much fire, he might just melt himself, and going to be putting pressure on both fronts right now, forcing action into multitasking to his heart's content, but not able to be happy about it even so. Meanwhile, losing more and more in the main base, while more and more zealots pouring into the third base location, some zealots still alive, and the natural keeping these hydras pinned down and the zealots free to do some damage in the main base there are some muters cleaning those up but a lot of drones did go down really siphoned off the economic uh, potential of the zerg here meanwhile it's still pumping units and not replacing those drones so really everything going wrong for action he is transitioning into hive he's probably made the kind of uh, assessment that he's not going to be able to really deal with the third base from snow so instead he's going to, have to rush into hive and try and cling on to a, a late game potential here Oh, this is so tilting right now, I think, for action. You can see that he just didn't even see or didn't even pay attention to the natural, all the drones going down there, the third base as well. It's so hard to deal with zealots running into all your bases at the same time. I think he needs to make a massive round of drones right now and try to recoup some of this these losses here. But at, during that time, I think that Snow is going to be able to create such an army such a massive army here and break there's so many different locations that action needs to defend right now i don't think he's gonna have the the army here with all this these drones popping out he's not gonna have the army to actually defend all these different locations all these different spots he's gonna be able to pick off a uh, dark temple down here these uh mutas are a factor something that could slow down snow just slightly here as he moves forward if he loses a bunch of templar he might not feel confident to keep moving across the map and that might buy action some time but action needs to buy a ridiculous amount of time to really get this uh th this this hive online kind of funny to see snow blocking his own probe there in the main but that's just hardly even a factor at this point snow has such a massive army here where is he going to go with it action has to be ready yeah, I think actually a little bit of a misread on the game state back then. It looks like he was still focused on pumping units during all that and thought there was going to be... Meanwhile, they're going to be just stabbing this third base location with the Mutaling, getting all those cannons down, and they're going to be retreating with those Mutas away from the, the potential chase micro of those Corsair threat. Also forcing out some storms with these links, maybe on top of these high Templars as well. Might get one of the kills on those for a good surround. Uh, yeah, it does find the kill on that as well, so really good uh, um, from action to open up that position for potential uh, future attack. It'll also probably keep Snow a little bit more defensive focus for now and allow action a little bit of breathing room get this fourth base online produce enough of an army that he can actually now start to fight the protoss out on the map he has got a, a very strong hydro link force with this comp is going to be running and sniping some of these high templars which is what he needs to do if he can kill enough of these high templars like this then there will not be enough sonic storm remaining to fight this big infantry force he's got waiting in the wings here yeah he sees where the courses are every time the courses kill an overlord it's a big loss for action but it's also giving him that information that the Corsairs are not with the army and that's an opportunity to snipe some Templar. He sees the Corsairs down in the bottom left again. He's coming in for some Templar snipes. We've got Ling Hydra here coming from the south. We've got these Mutas sharking around in the middle of... I'm, I'm really surprised he's not actually committing with them right now. Just get over here and start killing some Templar before the, uh, the full army reaches this side of the map. He dives in. He kills one of the Templar actually wow. over here at the third. Even against four cannons, great, getting a great surround with the Lings means he will be able to pick that off. 
Snow heading north right now. He's going to come through this uh, 12 o'clock base, maybe, and head over towards the natural. No, he changes direction here at the last second. Going to head back towards the middle of the map. More snipes on some Templar here. This is really what action needs right now. Picking off one Templar and, you know, baiting out a bunch of storms here. He's going to get this other Templar. No, he has to back away, but all the storms have been utilized here. This is really impressive play from Action. He's got his fourth base online right now. Uh, Adrenal Grands should be finished. These Lings are going to trade so much better. Look at the Lurker count as well. These Lurkers will trade well no matter what, providing they don't just die to one storm. So everything is going well for Action. Although, meanwhile, that DT, there's no Overlord here because of the Corsairs. Not going to be able to detect this, this DT. And if he's distracted, he's not going to notice for quite some time. He's trying to organize his army right now. He's organizing his army, trying to get all the control groups together, trying to set up an attack. But he's not paying attention to his natural expansion of his infrastructure to notice that these drones are going down right now, Sam. Oh, not like this. Not like this. He's going into the natural here, but he's got no overlord. There's three Dark Templar dealing so much damage right now. They're just ripping everything apart here as they come forward. Where are the overlords? He's going to catch the overlords coming across the map, I think, right now. Overlords are going to try to make their way over here, but they're going to be stopped by the Corsairs and, of course, by these Dragoons that are following this up. Look at all the Overlords that are going to go down. He needs to pull back and keep these alive, but they're not going to be able to survive. The DT does fall, but the last Overlord going to go down. The Lurkers are going to have to split right now. There's the uh, couple of DTs coming up. The Overlord dies. Now they can go to work here. He doesn't even need to do anything more than just bring the DTs forward with the one Observer. He should be able to clear it everything out oh actually splitting the shots there he manages to get uh, a kill on that dt with just some good uh splash damage but coming forward here running forward trying to kill with these lurkers all of them end up going down gg is called action GG. gets kicked out and another protoss win here snow putting out a great performance in that game well a climactic finisher there action versus snow really a tough game and a tough week for Zergs overall, eating so much damage from DTs in every game. My Zerg heart bleeds for these guys, man. They just so just so unfortunate letting these uh, DTs just ravage the economy over and over again. But here we are with another Protoss victory as they're about to cross out the Zerg logo here with another win. They're making a statement on that point ranking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Sam. Couldn't have said it better myself. Meanwhile, we see the flat line of Terran, but this is not really indicative of the performance we've seen tonight or the, the other previous weeks. We saw a much more TVZ specialized lineup. I'm having good feelings for the TVZ semifinals. We're going to be seeing some really great games there, although I do not want Terran to win that. I would much rather see the Zerg versus Protoss finals, which I think will be much more uh, chaotic and fireworks uh, orientated, whereas I think a TVP finals will be a little bit more one sided for the uh, Protoss apes here. Yeah. I just hope that in that Protoss versus Zerg finals, we see uh, some better anti-DT uh, play from these Zerg players. It just, <laughs> it, it really does hurt, man. Watching as a, a DT walk past your overlord, beautiful Sim City, and a single sunken colony, and right-click directly into the main and win the game. It's pretty right. brutal. The invisible men, so, so damn strong, and Protoss are utilizing them perfectly in these games. Yeah, at least having the uh, Overlord there, like you did earlier, that got sniped by the um, Corsairs, it gives you some counterplay in drilling those drones away, not losing too many. But unfortunately, at the worst case uh, time, worst time possible, he was looking at his army, sending all his control groups up and setting the attack, and wasn't even able to notice his drones getting ravaged. So might, might even miss the uh, red dot on the minion, even if he had that Overlord there. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, Zerg need to be a little bit more on top of their game, I think, with this early uh, defense against the harass potential. And someone like Snow is known for his shenanigans and DT usage, so I really feel like you should be preparing better for that. Yeah, for sure. And a great finisher there, getting rid of all the overlords, picking off the lurkers with DT. There's actually, I, I really don't think there's a worse feeling, honestly, than having a whole bunch of your lurkers get killed by a single DT. It is so brutal. Of course, you can target your own units and try to uh, splash down the DT, but it's so hard to do, especially in the thick of things when you're trying to get your overlords to the front, uh, trying to protect your overlords as they're coming forward as well, and you're just <laughs> like targeting your own lurkers. It never feels good. So, I mean, just just a really, really painful way to lose a game, and uh, I think action's going to be pretty sour about that one. For sure. Um, 
Protoss here taking another victory, man. They they just seem unstoppable. The Protoss lineup in ASL is very, very small. There's really not that many players in there, but they're they're the players that have been regulars here in the KCM. They are so, so strong right now. It's it's funny to see how weak the weaker Protoss players are, but how strong the strongest Protoss players are. There seems to be a lot of disparity in the tiers, uh, even amongst the highest echelon of the, the Protoss players. Uh, usually, you, I would have thought that'd be more the case for like uh, Terran and Zerg, but it seems like with the how hard the skill ceiling is for Protoss at the pro level, we're starting to really see the best of the best, like start to differentiate and really show like why they are the ones that should be leading the charge for their respective races. And uh, I'm kind of starting to get some uh, renewed respect for some of these Protoss players, and kind of have a lot of hope for them going into ASL, especially best. Yeah, especially best, man. Holy. Best and Snow are on another level right now. I don't know who can stop them. I'm really looking forward to these semifinals and finals, but we've got one more week left. That's going to be week number eight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you there. Thanks, guys.